Network troubleshooting using Wireshark. So let's talk about Wireshark, but specifically let's talk about why should you learn Wireshark, right? Um, especially if you're not actually working in the network field. Say you're a DBA or you're a storage analyst or you are a security expert. Why should you learn Wireshark? Um, and to me, this illustration it will show you why, okay? Uh, so let's take a look at this diagram. It's very busy right now. There's lots going on, but bear with me. It's going to make sense. It's a very simple reason why we want to learn Wireshark in this day and age. And that is almost every application that you use, whether it be an application from your phone, an application from your PC, an application that is um, kind of behind the scenes, like a batch application, um, you know, mainframe, anything, these applications are all distributed. And what do I mean by distributed? Distributed meaning that the application does not just run within one server. The application is running across multiple different servers and services in order to function. You know, an application requires services from a variety of different places in order to function correctly. And that's what distributed applications are. So if you think about it that way, well, distributed applications need network connectivity between all of these pieces in order to function. And that's really where the uh, beauty of packet analysis is, if you learn how to do packet analysis with a tool like Wireshark. If you can understand how traffic flows between these systems, you can understand what happens when the traffic does not flow correctly and what that means for the overall application. And that's really it. Wireshark and packet analysis allows you to read the tea leaves and understand uh, how these things work together and how to troubleshoot them when they don't, even if the issue isn't with the actual network itself. One of the number one things that all of my teams and all the companies I've worked at get engaged for is application performance investigations. That's where an application, say this application over here on the right, is say slow, no one knows why, and even though the network itself is clean, the network team is brought in to actually investigate and see what's going on. They, we do that by using Wireshark. We take a capture from the load balancer, from a server, from the firewall, we interpret it, and we provide that analysis to the organization so that they can go and figure it out. It's a pain because you're often brought into it, it's issues that aren't even network related, as I mentioned, but the benefit is that you become like an IT ninja, right? Your organization starts looking to you to help solve issues, even though they aren't in your realm. And if you don't think that's valuable, then you really need a lesson on career growth because it's one thing to say, I am a great DNS expert, right? Or I'm a great ISP expert for the internet. That's all I do. But if you're someone who can understand networking, but also understand this entire ecosystem, you become infinitely more powerful. So let's connect this all together. Okay, so let's say we have an example application that we're accessing from this PC down here, okay? Um, to access this application, which is over here on the right, we need to do a few things. Well, first of all, we need to connect to a DNS server. In this case, it's a local DNS server to get the IP address that we're gonna connect to, right? So that's this direction. And then the DNS server returns a packet to us in this direction with the answer. Our PC then needs to connect to our local router, okay? And then the router then connects over the public internet into this application over here, or this organization over here. That organization is likely protected by a firewall. So once the traffic passes the firewall, it hits a load balancer. The load balancer then distributes that traffic to one or more application servers, usually it's two or more, and so the request hits one of these, okay? Then those application servers have to then communicate to backend resources that they need to function. So things like Active Directory, things like the database, things like storage over the network, okay? And then you can see that this becomes a tangled web because of how many different connections are required by all these components, right? It gets kind of crazy. Um, What's more is these application servers might actually require additional resources from outside their organization to function. Say they use an API from Google. Well, then the application server is going to be doing this, going to be connecting outbound through the firewall to the internet, to 
Google and retrieving data so that sends data back as well, right? And this application has server has to do the same thing. So what I'm illustrating here is that at every point, every piece of this diagram that's a red arrow is network traffic, right? Traffic that is being passed from system to system across the network, whether it be traffic from your PC to the DNS server, whether it be from your PC to the internet, from the internet to the firewall, from the firewall to the load balancer, from the load balancers to the application servers, to the application servers to the backend. And in almost every one of these positions, you can take a packet capture to be analyzed in Wireshark, okay? So I could do a packet capture on my PC using Wireshark itself or using um, something like TCP dump. I could do it on a DNS server, okay? I can do it on a router, certainly, with TCP dump. Um, I could do it on a firewall, certainly. Usually TCP dump is the, is the tool of choice, but there's also GUI solutions for that. Load balancers, definitely. Servers, same thing, you could either do Wireshark, if it's a Windows server, um, or you could actually, or Linux, you could also install TCP dump on those. Databases support packet capture. Active Directory is based on Windows. It supports packet capture. And almost every NFS storage vendor I've seen supports packet capture. Not only that, we've got a Google API server over here. They're likely not going to give you a packet capture, but on their end, they're certainly doing it on their own if they need to, okay? What's more is that you also have things like known as taps. A tap is a device that actually sits on the network between devices and sucks up data, right? We talk about like, well, the, you know, the kind of shady stuff the NSA was doing back in the day where they were sucking up data from Americans uh, on ISPs, they were using taps. And what a tap is, let's say we have a tap sitting outside the router on your home network or your company's network. It's a device that sits like here. It sucks up all this data going in and out and sends it off to a server, okay? That data is packet data. So you may have a tap here. This organization may have a tap here. Google certainly has taps going in and out of the network. And the idea is the same, is you wanna gather this packet information. Why? Because packet information is the truth. It is a record of the communications between these systems. And almost every organization is using that data in order to solve problems. So you can understand now, even though you may not be a network engineer, network analyst, um, network admin, you, it's in your interest to learn a little bit about Wireshark and a little bit about packet analysis to help you solve problems. Because ultimately in this day and age, this distribution of services is only gonna get more complex over time. And if you're someone who can help understand a problem from user's perspective all the way into the back end and be able to look at packet captures and analyze that and provide insight, well then you've become really like the high, in my mind, the highest level of like IT ninja and troubleshooter. And that's why I think you should learn Wireshark. That's it for this video. If you have any questions about Wireshark or networking, feel free to post it in the comments. We can chat about it there, or you can always send me the capture file to take a look at. I have a Dropbox that I'll send you to send the file. I've also got a Discord server now, so you can check it out that channel and join to do the same, post questions about networking, issues you're working on at work, etc. And as always, please like and subscribe to support the channel. Until next time.